Father God, thank you for a wonderful time of worship together. God, thank you for enabling that, for giving us a love for you. Lord, thank you for your love. Lord, what a sweet gift it is. And as we come to this time where we remember the sacrifice you made so that we could worship you, Lord, help us to, to meditate on that, help us to grow in our love for you, and help us to worship you well, Lord, in your name, amen. Welcome. This is the time of worship where we celebrate the Lord's Supper. And today I wanna to spend our time meditating on 1 John 3, 1. So please turn there with me. There are men in the front here with Bibles. If you don't have one, uh, they'd love to put one in your hand. Just raise your hand and they'll hand them out. Look at the beginning of this verse with me. 1 John 3, verse 1. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us, that we would be called children of God, and such we are. I spent a lot of this week meditating on this per portion of this verse. And as I have, I have noticed there is nothing in this verse particularly new to me. There isn't some unique look at the gospel that blew my mind. In fact, it is a summary of many things that we all know to be true. But the way that John presents it can be such an encouragement to us as we take this opportunity to remember Christ's death on the cross. The key to this entire verse is that the Father is the actor. He is the one with the love, he is the one bestowing the love, and he is the one calling us children of God. God the Father is the actor. So what motivated his actions? The motivation of his action in this verse is a great love for us. But the circumstance of that motivation is what helps us understand how great that love really is. God the Father had no reason to love us. There is nothing in us that generates that love. In fact, without God's love acting on us, we are enemies of him. We deserve a wrath that is unbearable, eternal, and unlimited. Think about it this way. If one person in all of human history had sinned one time, all of mankind would deserve God's wrath. But it wasn't one person and it wasn't one sin. Every human that has walked this planet has sinned against a holy God. Every human that has walked this planet deserves a wrath of a holy God. And every human that has walked this planet needs God's love to act. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we would be called children of God and such we are. What was his action? When he bestowed his love on us, how did he do it? Well, he sent his son to the cross to bear the wrath we deserve. For God to call his us his children, someone had to bear the punishment that we deserved. In a minute, men will pass out a cup of juice and a piece of cracker, and they re represent Christ's body that was broken and Christ's blood that was poured out for us. Jesus, when contemplating God's wrath that we deserve, when he was preparing to take on that punishment for us, he pleaded with God for another way. And yet he said, not my will, but thy will be done. God the Father, as an act of love for us, willed Jesus, his only son, to the cross and poured out his wrath on his own son. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us, that we would be called children of God, and such we are. So who is the us in this verse? It does not work grammatically to take the us in John's context and automatically assume it is the us in this context. We have to know who John was talking to. It is crucial to know who the recipients of God's love are and who the children of God are. How do I know if I'm a child of God? How can I know if I deserve wrath or if I'm a recipient of God's love? It's really a question that has been contemplated for all of human existence. Philosophers reason their way to answers. However, this book, 1 John, is my favorite book to answer this question. It is written to help us know if we are children of God. There are many passages and many verses in this book, and I encourage you to read it through if you're contemplating this. But I want to look at chapter 1 real quick, 
turn to the left or look to your left. Um, Jacob did a great job a couple of weeks ago walking us through this passage, and so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it, but I want to read it. I want to read verse 5 through verse 10 and hear what John says about this. This is the message that we have heard from him and announced to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, or worded differently, if we say that we are children of God, and yet we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. We must first believe and confess, and then we must repent of our sins and keep his commandments. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us, that we would be called children of God, and such we are. God's love motivated the only act that could have made us his children, sending his son to the cross to bear the wrath that we deserve. We're about to take the Lord's Supper, and maybe you're contemplating whether you are a child of God right now. I want to remind you, God is the actor in your salvation. As the men pass the bread and the cup, reread chapter 1, verse 5 through 10, and give yourself an honest evaluation. Are you the one that walks in light or darkness? And if you walk in darkness, verse 9 is clear. Confess your sins, and he will cleanse you. Or if you do not, however, if you do not, during communion this morning, please let the cup and the bread pass. This time of communion is a time of worship reserved for God's children. If you have questions about this, please see me or one of the elders or the person you came with after the service, and we'd love to talk to you about our Savior. Or if you are a child of God and have confessed and by your own assessment see that you are no longer walking in darkness, please join us in remembering the Lord's Supper and meditate on the sweet truth. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we would be called children of God and such we are. The men will be passing the trays out. Um, go, it will include a juice and a gluten-free cracker. Take the tray, pass it out, and take communion on your own today. I'll be back in a few minutes to close us in prayer. <laughs>